SHAP is the most powerful Python package for understanding and debugging your models. The underlying theory of Shapley values leads to some desirable properties for a feature attribution method. And the SHAP package can approximate these values way faster than any other method. But SHAP still has its limitations. Understanding these is critical to avoid any incorrect conclusions when using the package. Hi, my name is Connor and welcome to ADO. Today, we'll be discussing the four most significant limitations of SHAP. If you wanna clarify some of the details in this video, then make sure to check out the companion article linked in the description. Also, if you wanna take your SHAP skills to the next level, then wait until the end of the video where I'll explain how you can get access to a Python SHAP course. The first limitation has to do with the SHAP package itself. Kernel SHAP is a model agnostic approach in theory, but this does not mean it's model agnostic in practice. Why? Well, because SHAP has not been implemented for all packages. Personally, I've applied the package when working with scikit-learn, xgboost, catboost, pytorch, and keras. But you should keep in mind that if you're working with a less popular framework, you may have some trouble. Even with the deep learning frameworks, SHAP can be quite fickle. I had a lot of trouble trying to get it to work with pytorch. Part of the problem is that SHAP is open source. Now, don't get me wrong, I love open source. It means we get to use the package for free and have access to the source code. However, if you run into problems, it can be difficult to find solutions. This is evidenced by the growing number of issues on the SHAP GitHub repo. The second limitation comes from how SHAP values are calculated. Feature dependencies are when two or more model features are correlated or associated. That is, the value of one feature depends on the value of another. SHAP is impacted by feature dependencies in two ways. The first comes from how SHAP values are approximated. Take kernel SHAP. This method works by permutating feature values and making predictions on those permutations. Once we have enough permutations, the Shapley values are estimated using linear regression. The problem is, when permutating features, we assume they are independent. This assumption is not always true. Take the scatter plot of kilometers driven versus car age. These features are used to predict the price of a second-hand car. There is a clear correlation, which makes sense. The older a car, the more time we've had to increase its mileage. Now take the red observation. This car is 10 years old. Cars this age will have driven distances within the solid oval. When we train a model, it only sees these realistic observations. Yet when we calculate SHAP values, we permutate the feature across its entire range. For kilometers driven, this includes unrealistic observations within the dotted oval. We expect the model to make predictions on these observations. This can lead to unrealistic predictions and SHAP values. Feature dependencies can also lead to some confusion when interpreting a model. For example, a model could use country of origin to predict the chance of developing skin cancer. Are people in some countries predisposed? Is sunblock more expensive? No, it's the varying levels of sunshine in each country. Country of origin is known as a proxy variable, and it may not be immediately obvious why they have been used to make predictions. Ultimately, it is because machine learning only cares about correlations and not associations. And a proxy variable is correlated with a true cause of an event. This leads us to our third limitation, that is SHAP cannot be used for causal analysis. This is the process of finding the true cause of an event. SHAP can tell you how important a model feature is to a prediction, not how important that feature is to the actual target variable. I found a good quote when reading one of the issues in the SHAP GitHub repo. SHAP is not a measure of how important a given feature is in the real world. It is simply how important a feature is to the model. And we must keep in mind that a model is not necessarily a good representation of reality. Predictions can be incorrect. In this case, SHAP values will give the contributions to a prediction that is not even the same as the target variable. Even if the model is 100% accurate, 
it could be using proxy variables. All this means is that we should not make conclusions that extend beyond the model, even if it's tempting to do so. The last limitation comes from us, the humans using the SHAP package. From technical analysis to astrology, humans love finding patterns that aren't really there. Data science is no different. When analyzing SHAP plots, we create false narratives. Why is the model predicting high rates of cancer? It must be that hats are unfashionable. We can force these stories onto our analysis, even if they come from model quirks. This can be done unconsciously as a result of confirmation bias. It can also be done maliciously to support a conclusion that will benefit someone. This is similar to the process of p-hacking. We torture the data until it gives us what we want. In the end, all these limitations should increase your skepticism around conclusions made using SHAP. The conclusions could be made using the incorrect assumption of feature independence and never accept a conclusion that goes beyond the model, especially if it supports an ulterior motive. Check out this first video if you want to learn more about the theory behind SHAP. Otherwise, if you want to get straight into the Python code, Check out the second video. And if you want to take your skills to the next level, you can get free access to my Python SHAP course by signing up to the newsletter in the description. This will equip you with the knowledge and skills needed to explain any machine learning model using SHAP.